Good evening and welcome to Seattle Public Schools Levy presentation. We'll be starting in just one moment. We would also like to take the time to make sure that anyone who needs interpretation services finds their way this evening successfully. Please take a look at the screen in front of you and please check for your particular language and follow those directions so that you can be served. Thank you so much for being here. We will be right back with you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Bev Redmond. I am Chief of Staff for Seattle Public Schools. Thank you for being here and thank you for taking the time to join us and your continued interest in our schools and the future of our students. We truly appreciate your willingness to engage in this important conversation this evening. Before we begin, want to take just a moment to do a little more wayfinding for our families who may need interpretation services. On the slide before you, you do have some directions, some instructions that will help you reach our interpretation rooms. We do have the services in our top languages this evening. So again, for our families who may need language interpretation services, we want to give you just a second to take a look at the slide and help you find your way to our interpreters. As we begin, would like to start the evening with a land acknowledgement. We would like to acknowledge that we are on the ancestral lands and the traditional territories of the Puget Sound Coast Salish people. Today is our final of three community levy forums, and we're excited to share the details of our proposed levy renewals. We, we will be recording this particular presentation, and it will be translated and available online. Tonight, we will also give you some details regarding our budget, and then walk you through the specifics of our levy renewals. There are two. Educational Programs and Operations Levy, or EP&O, or our second, Building Excellence BEC-6 Levy Capital Program. If these levies are approved by the board on November 19th, they will appear on the February 11th, 2025 ballot. At the end of this presentation, we will have a, an opportunity for you to ask your questions there is a Q&A function in the Teams area that you can use to submit those questions as we go along. I know that there are many 
many of our family members who are impacted by the news of our preliminary recommendation regarding school closure and consolidation. You may have a question about that this evening. And as it relates to our overall budget, we will be able to answer that for you. So thank you for your interest. Let's talk about our levies. Levies are local property taxes that are approved by, the, by our voters to fund public schools. If these levies are approved, all of the funding support supports our students and remains here in Seattle Public Schools. These levies are not new taxes, but they are renewals of expiring levies. As an overview, let's go through our levies. Educational Programs and Operations, EPNO Levy Renewal. It's the levy renewal that helps us with covering our essential day-to-day -day expenses and our operations that the state doesn't fully fund, such as staffing, special education, student programs like athletics, drama, and art. The capital levy is our main source of funding for school safety improvements, technology, and critical building repairs, renovations, and new construction. Both levies will go to the school board for approval on November 19th, and if passed, will again appear on the February 11th, 2025 ballot. A reminder that as we go on in our presentation that there are interpretation services available so that you can connect to the presentation in your chosen and spoken language. And now I'd like to introduce Dr. Kurt Buttleman, our CFO, to explain more about our current budget climate. Kurt? Thank you, Bev. <laughs> nice to see you again for the third of the series. Just like we never left. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. we changed clothes. And Richard and I got haircuts, yes. I think. Yeah. <laughs> very smooth, very smooth. Yes. Um, so before we get into the specifics on these two levies we're discussing tonight, we wanted to provide a little more context on the current budget situation of Seattle Public Schools. I know there's a lot of interest in that, so we wanted to provide that context this evening. K-12 funding in Seattle. As you may be aware, some of you may be aware, school districts are funded through a combination of state, local, and federal dollars. And Seattle Public School says budget, has a budget of about $1.23 billion for this current school year. Of that $1.23 billion, 15.6% or $191 million comes from the levy we're discussing tonight, the EPNL levy. As Bev stated, this is a renewal that is being discussed to potentially be voted on in February of the current levy. And of that, of the current levy is funding $191 million of the Seattle Public Schools um, needs today. The intent of this levy funding is continue funding for these enrichment activities while the state funds basic education. Seattle Public Schools is currently projecting a budget deficit of about $94 million for the 25-26 school year. And this situation is not just specific to Seattle Public Schools, but many other districts across the state are struggling with these same financial issues. It's a structural issue in that the needs of Seattle Public Schools students and families are exceeding the funding provided by the state. As many of us are aware, the cost of living and doing business in Seattle continues to rise as well as the needs of our community continue to grow. Security, special education services, multi-language services, Substitute teacher costs are just examples of where the state funding does not cover the needs of Seattle Public Schools and where the levy provides a supplemental funding source. Over the last few years, Seattle Public Schools has begun addressing the structural deficit and we continue to work with the state legislature and other colleagues to work to bring more stability into the state's K-12 system. Listed on this slide are a few examples of things Seattle Public Schools has done in recent years to help with this structural issue. You'll see that school consolidations is just one of the many strategies the district is employing to reduce costs. In addition to considering school consolidations, the district has reduced its contingency reserves to cover current costs. It's implemented salary cuts for non-represented staff, reductions in central office staff and other expenses. It's reduced school staffing and discretionary all allocations to schools. and has even implemented a, a voluntary athletic fee for families this school year. For folks who are interested in doing a deep dive into this financial information, 
Seattle Public Schools has a budget book, 205 pages of it, that can be found on seattleschools.org on the website by entering budget book into the search box. Please be aware that the school board will be continuing its budget discussions throughout the school year, culminating in a budget decision in July of 2025. We'll now transition to the main objective for tonight, which is to provide information on the levies. The first of those levies is the EPNO levy that Bev described earlier. The EPNO levy or, or operations levy is enrichment funding that helps continue funding for day-to-day -day educational programs and services that are not fully funded by the state. This is the $191 million that I mentioned earlier. Here are a few of the examples of programs and services that are currently funded by the levy. Student safety and support, student services and programs, and student opportunities. On a personal note, I am a parent of two kids who are graduates of Seattle Public Schools so I can speak personally to how much these value these programs and services provided to my family and the community that we live in. We may refer to these as enrichment levies, but speaking from my personal experience, these are critical, critical components to a child's education and they're supported by the EPNO levy. We often get questions about why Seattle Public Schools can't just raise more money from Seattleites to fix the deficit problem and provide additional opportunities for students. This slide is a summary of what restrictions school districts in Washington have on levying local taxes. State law does limit the amount school districts may collect, and that has changed recently with the McCleary decision, which further limited the amount school districts can collect from their local communities. Although districts are limited in what they can collect from taxpayers by state law, Seattle Public Schools and other districts do ask voters for an additional amount of capacity if these limits are changed by the state in the future. The information we are presenting tonight does build in some capacity should those laws be changed over the course of the next three years. <clears throat> a little bit of detail on some of the items we've mentioned, the first of which is security staff. The state currently funds in its allocation model, some of you may know this as the prototypical model, funding for Seattle Public Schools to have 9.3 full-time equivalent school, school safety specialists. Due to the needs of our communities, Seattle Public Schools has 73 of these positions. The difference of that, 63.7, is funded by this operational levy. Without the levy, Seattle Public Schools would need to reduce services or reduce costs in other parts of the district to fund this important need in our community. Another example is special education. The state's funding allocation model only provides about $150 million on an average year for special education services for Seattle Public Schools. The district is mandated to provide these services and so that gap of approximately $74 million is funded by this operational levy. Another example is athletics. The state provides zero funding for middle and high school athletics to school districts. So this levy funds fully the $5.5 million in coaches, field rentals, equipment, and transportation to ensure our students have access to after school sports. The cost of the EPO or operations levy is approximately $747 million over the three years. This would begin in 2026. And the rates that homeowners would pay would be between 78 and 72 cents per $1,000 of assessed property value over that time. The amount we're talking about tonight is slightly higher than what we presented the first two meetings um, in order to provide enough capacity um, should the state change the way that they're restricting levy utilization. I think I'm gonna pass it back to Beth, who's gonna take us to Richard. All right, well, <clears throat> Richard, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, all right, tell us a little bit more about BEC 6. Well, thank you, Bev. Um, so again, I'm Richard Bess. I'm the Executive Director of Capital Projects Planning and Facilities Operations. And I'm pleased to come to you tonight to be able to talk about our BEC-6 capital levy. The BEC-6 capital levy replaces the expiring BEC-5 capital levy, and it's really focused on safety and security improvements, energy conservation improvements, heating and ventilation improvements. And I think the COVID pandemic really highlighted the need for good heating and ventilation um, systems. And then we'll be um, making some additions 
and replacing, uh, uh, implementing major work at five of our schools. In addition, the BEC-6 capital levy is a significant portion of our Department of Technology Services funding. Literally, it provides 90% of their funding for technology throughout Seattle Public Schools, 106 schools, and then our support uh, buildings as well. So the major projects planned in the BEC-6 capital levy are Lowell Elementary School. Lowell has been an elementary school since 1890 um, for Seattle Public Schools. Uh, the, the most current portion of that building was built uh, in the 1950s, and there's a portion um, done one by, designed by one of the three iconic architects in, the city, uh, in Seattle Public Schools that remains from 1919. That portion we anticipate uh, of the building we anticipate will be landmarked. We'll be replacing the additions that were added on to Lowell. And so that's why you see that um, noted as a addition and renovation of a historic building. Uh, in addition, we'll be looking at a Northeast Elementary School. As many of you know, Sacagawea, the design costs for Sacagawea were included in the BEX-5 capital levy. Um, $4 million was included in BEX-5. That money has remained fenced um, for that purpose. Uh, Seattle Public Schools spent approximately $380,000 of that money in initial um, survey work uh, design conceptual planning for Sacagawea, and then the district began a well-resourced school conversation. We suspended that, uh, but we do have several aging facilities in the Northeast region of, uh, of Seattle, and so we are waiting to that conversation concludes <coughs> before uh, we make a recommendation to our school board as to which elementary school to replace in the Northeast region. In addition, similar to Sacagawea, Akikorosi Middle School was also um, partially funded in the BEX-5 capital levy. $10 million were identified for design. That money has remained fenced for that purpose. We've begun the design process and the BEX-6 capital levy will actually fund construction of a um, addition and then the renovation of the existing building at Akikorosi. And then two other projects planned. One is an addition at Chief South International High School. It's focused on enhancing the career and technical education um, program classrooms, and then also eliminating eight portables on the west portion of that site for general education classrooms. So we'll have a, a 10 classroom addition working with uh, CTE and then um, eight um, general ed classrooms. And then lastly, John Marshall um, School is an interim site. Uh, this is uh, also an older facility at Seattle Public Schools. And so we're looking at enhancing the structural system, the HVAC system, the electrical systems in this building to meet the current educational program. Um, City of Seattle is uh, updating their um, unreinforced masonry, um, and so this is commonly referred to as URM. They're looking at legislation going to City Council in 2025, and so these improvements at the John Marshall School will um, meet the new code requirements that we anticipate will be passed. A big portion of the BEC-6 capital levy is safety and security. And uh, with safety and security, you can see the first seven items on this slide um, really address those items uh, that we'll be implementing. We have uh, made um, secure entry vestibules really part of our work in capital projects since the BEX-4 capital levy. Um, what is a secure entry vestibule? It's an, a vestibule that will allow you to come in from the outside, but force you to go into the office before you get access to the school. 
The doors to the school will be locked as you come into the vestibule. You'll be forced to go into the office. You check in into the office and then you get access to the school. In addition, we'll be um, analyzing our site security fencing and our building fencing to make sure that it's appropriate, that it provides a secure environment for our, our students and staff. We have major uh, projects planned for both intercom system district-wide. We'll be making improvements to our intercom system and then district-wide we'll be making security improvements and those security improvements include the installation of security cameras, upgrading of our AI phones, door and window intrusion alarms, and those projects will be implemented on a district-wide basis. And then we're also looking at a visitor management system. Um, similar to um, home projects, you know, we will have uh, the door and, and window intrusion alarms as part of those security system improvements. So um, other safety measures uh, proposed in the BEC-6 capital levy include fire alarm system upgrades, seismic improvements. Again, as I noted, uh, City of Seattle will be passing a URM ordinance in 2025. We want to be positioned so that we can comply in all of our URM buildings. Again, Seattle Public Schools has 106 schools um, in excess of 20 are URM constructed. Um, we've been making improvements at uh, most of our URM buildings, but we still have a couple left to implement. And then defibrillator emplacements will be replacing defibrillators district-wide as well. Lastly, I'm gonna note that accessibility is a, an issue that's important to capital projects and planning. It's important to our school board but most importantly, it's important to our students. And so we're looking at path of travel um, for accessibility improvements. We're looking at implementing eleva elevator repairs as part of our BEC-6 capital levy. Similar to your homes with 106 schools, we also have to look at roof replacements, window repairs, wall repairs, um, Generally, roofs have to be replaced on a 30-year basis, and you know that from the work that, that you have to do to keep, keep up your home. We implement those types of repairs here at Seattle Public Schools. Uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, as I noted earlier, really was highlighted, the importance of those systems um, during the COVID pandemic. And so we're looking at making repairs to our heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. Also be implementing um, boiler upgrades at several of our schools as well. We're looking at creating single occupant uh, student restrooms at our secondary schools. We know this is a, as, a, as a measure that will help reduce some of our um, safety incidents on our campus. Um, with great visibility to these areas, they can be passively supervised and hopefully reduce uh, tensions within a building. And then as noted on the first slide, we have energy um, upgrades that we'll be making. Um, the state of Washington has passed a clean uh, buildings performance standard, which has set thresholds for an energy use index or more commonly referred to as an EUI for compliance for all public buildings within the state of Washington. Um, failure to comply will actually have a financial penalty which will hit our general fund and further exacerbate our budget issues. So we need to begin on making energy improvements to position Seattle Public Schools for full compliance at all 106 schools. We will not be able to accomplish that effort with the BEC-6 capital levy, but the BEC-6 capital, capital levy is the pathway to begin this journey of getting all schools positioned so that we meet state of Washington EUI requirements. And then playground safety and site improvements. This is something we started about five years ago. We have um, 65 elementary schools, 10 K-8 schools. Those elementary and K-8 schools have either two or three play, uh, playground areas. 
and we monitor those and have a replacement schedule for once every 15 years, those are being replaced. Uh, we've been engaged in this process for several years. Um, this, this past year, we implemented um, playground safety improvements at Highland Park, um, Rising Star, and Maple Elementary Schools. And then lastly, we have pro uh, projects proposed at our central kitchen um, to complete the renovation of our central kitchen. That school, that uh, building um, serves six, uh, 65,000 um, 65, meals um, uh, out of that building. Before you go on, I want to just break in for a little bit of clarity. You used the acronym URM a couple of slides back. What would that mean? URM refers to unreinforced masonry. And it's a term that's uh, used in, uh, by architects and engineers to talk about a structural system. And it's, uh, URM is, refers to unreinforced masonry. Thank you so, so much. Appreciate thanks, that. Mm -hmm. um, other projects we have planned at the Beck Six Capital Levy include improvements at uh, beginning the improvements at Nathan Hale. We'll be studying the Thornton Creek uh, watershed to look at how we can mitigate flood uh, flooding at Nathan Hale High School. We have issues both within the courtyards and the parking lot at Nathan Hale, and then we'll be implementing the interior build-out of our Rainier Beach High School uh, Performing Arts Center, the new Rainier Beach High School Performing Arts Center. Um, lastly, we'd be making some uh, equipment uh, purchases for our maintenance um, grounds and custodial services. And then also this levy will cover um, uh, building modifications for academic needs, athletic field improvements, and you can see the full list of projects on the district's uh, website. So how were our projects selected? We'll use an independent um, third-party consultant to do a facilities condition assessment, and they go out to each of our 106 schools on a six-year basis, and they look at the building systems that are, um, uh, they, they look at the existing condition of our building systems at our schools, they rate those systems, then they bring that information back and we literally pour through that information to look at what are the conditions of our roofs? What are the conditions of our boilers? What are the conditions of our electrical service? And making sure that we are replacing equipment before it's, before it's reached its point of failure. And so this is how we begin to look at a project list. We also look to the school boards uh, uh, school board policy and to their guiding principles as to which um, projects should be proposed. Equity is a significant um, uh, lens in which we apply to the, the list of projects that we move to the school board for approval. We have a public oversight committee that oversees the work of capital projects and planning. We review that list with them. And similarly, our Department of Technology Services has a public oversight committee as well, known as the Information Technology Advisory Committee that oversees their work and what they're proposing in the, in the BECS levies as well. And then we made, uh, made a recommendation to the school board on October 9th. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, uh, Car Carlos de Valle to talk about the BEC-6 um, technology funding. Hi, um, I'm Carlos de Valle. I'm the uh, Assistant Superintendent of Technology for uh, Seattle Public Schools. Let me speak a little bit about um, the technology piece of this. Uh, how Richard mentioned, the capital levies fund about 90% of the technology uh, budget. Um, this translates about 127 FTEs in our, uh, in our department uh, that supports all the technology across all 106 schools and uh, the central office. Mm. The, uh, it also covers for students and uh, staff uh, computer devices uh, for the classroom uh, technology, for software and hardware that we utilize, uh, the development and implementation of uh, digital curriculum, 
uh, we're getting very heavy in that area now. Uh, upgrades to digital systems, uh, cybersecurity systems, monitoring systems, cameras at the schools, uh, and equitable access to um, inclusive digital resources, such as language uh, support systems uh, or online libraries. Uh, basically, uh, this budget pays for uh, how we keep the lights on you know, for Seattle Public Schools when it comes to technology. After uh, <clears throat> an analysis that we did internally and with the help of, of the ITEC uh, committee, uh, we came out to an ask of $450 million over um, a period of three years. Um, we, we are asking this uh, to fund three major areas of investments, the student learning and support, the infrastructure and security, and district systems and data. Let me go a little bit into what this means. Um, the student learning and support, uh, this portion of the levy covers for the technical support staff to provide for repairs and logistics of equipment at schools. Also, these funds provide for digital learning support, uh, purchasing of instructional software and licenses, uh, procurement of student laptops, and, uh, and the associated staff that, that oversees all these systems. Um, now, in the infrastructure and security, this portion of the levy uh, provides for operating costs of running the data center uh, and the backbone infrastructure. It provides for cybersecurity monitoring systems, uh, ser server software licenses, operations and equipment, uh, hardware maintenance. Uh, we pay the internet connectivity out of here, uh, and also the telephone service, and also all the associated staff that support all these areas. Uh, and finally, the district systems and data. Uh, these portions of the levy uh, covers for software systems, uh, developers and analysts. Uh, and the feeding care of our business financial systems, such as the uh, ERP, SAP, HR systems, our learning management systems, uh, Schoology, CSOC, uh, and the student information systems, uh, the Alice database, uh, Microsoft Teams for the education, power schools. It includes hardware and software uh, applications licenses, uh, consultants that we utilize uh, for skills uh, that, that we don't have in-house, and um, all the associated stuff the, the supports all these areas. So overall, the capital levy, uh, the ask is at 1.8 billion um, over six years. Uh, and this uh, rate ranges from between 93 to 79 cents uh, per thousand uh, of SS property value over uh, six years. With that, I'm gonna pass it to uh, Dr. Bottoman uh, for the rate comparison. All right, thank you, Carlos. We want to provide a little information to folks on how Seattle schools levy rates compare with uh, peers in the, the neighboring districts. As you can see in the slide, Seattle taxpayers pay about $1.85 per thousand dollars of assessed value currently. And this includes the BEX-5, the precursor levy to BEX-6, the current eb &O levy, and then a BTA levy, which funds some other technology and um, capital resources at Seattle Public Schools. So you'll see on this slide that Seattle Public Schools levy rates are low by comparison in the region, primarily because of the high uh, property values of commercial real estate in this in this city. I think we're near the end of our final, our formal presentation. Yes. That's going to take us home. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't go until we answer some <laughs> questions. So, uh, are you all ready? Ready. We'll dive into some community questions. The first question comes for, I believe, Kurt and Richard, so it'll be a shared effort. How does this levy help keep our students safe in school? What do the funds go for in terms of security staff and actual changes to buildings? Kurt, would you start. like to start? The okay. Security staff, are, the large majority of the security personnel that are in buildings are funded by this levy. That, that difference of 63 um, security personnel staff are funded by the EPNO levy. So without this levy, the district would have to minimize the staff of that type in the buildings or do other reductions in other places throughout the district. Um, Bev, I think we talked at a previous meeting about your father was a security yes. specialist in Chicago. Shouting out important my dad, yes. Important role for mm -hmm. um, keeping not only the building safe, but keeping kids on track. So. For sure. Uh, big, big role for our students. Helps with relationships as well as surveying the campus and, and keeping an out a, eye out in the community. And Richard. Well, Richard? well, then I would note that the security improvements that are planned in the BEC-6 capital levy are really 
infrastructure type improvements. We are looking at uh, replacement of security cameras. We're looking at um, door and window intrusion alarms. We are looking at the replacement of our intercom system. We're looking at implementing that district wide so that we can uh, be able to, uh, from a central location, reach out to all 106 schools at one time to make an announcement. Um, we view that as important. There are some security measures that come along with that intercom system that we are um, very interested in deploying at our schools. Um, obviously, because it is um, related to security, you don't want to give too much uh, detail on those improvements, but they will be significant upgrades uh, at all 106 schools um, to protect our students. Well, thank you so much to both of you. Uh, just a reminder to those of you in the audience, if you would like to submit a question, please do so by using our Q&A function. Again, please do check the Q&A function to submit a question. Richard, I'm going to keep you talking. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, if schools are slated for closure and, and they're included in the current levy proposal, mm -hmm. How will funds be reallocated to projects at other schools? Okay, so the schools that are uh, currently proposed to be closed, um, the school board will first have to make a, a determination there. Um, and at this moment in time, that determination is anticipated in January of 2025. Um, we will look to see what are the, um, you know, what are the funds allocated for for example, um, if they were allocated for a roof repair or a roof replacement, we'd like, want to assess that to make sure there aren't going to be consequential damages to the interior of that building if we were not to make um, that roof repair or roof replacement. Um, clearly, some of the security uh, funds that we have allocated, we would um, fence for and not utilize at those schools. And then we'd go back to our board and make a uh, direction as to, or, or a request, make a recommendation as to how to utilize those funds on another project. But we would not be making that, um, implementing that direction until we got approval from our board on how to utilize those funds for another improvement measure. Again, I wanna highlight that Seattle Public Schools has 106 schools. The average age of our schools is approaching 75 years and approximately 10 million square feet. We have a lot of facility needs. Absolutely. Thank you for that answer. Yeah. Kurt, EPNO, you mentioned it during an earlier part of the presentation. Why don't we just increase the EPNO levy uh, to help our deficit? Why can't we just switch things around to help our operational needs? I think the, the main reason is the McCleary decision limited what school districts can raise through their local levies. And the thinking behind that was that the state is, uh, the paramount duty of the state is to fund public education. Um, and so they're trying to prevent the over-reliance on local levy funding to provide funding for school districts, basic funding. And so school, South Public Schools is fortunate that the community is supportive of the school district, but. Um, there's a limit to what we can raise through local levies. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Carlos, how does this levy actually support technology in the classroom? Uh, quote, what kind of stuff would it what cover? Stuff? Yep, what kind of stuff? <laughs> <laughs> well, besides our, our regular tech refresh that we have on computers, you know, like laptops and, and the iPads, uh, we're looking into uh, two big investments for the classrooms. Um, and instruction. Uh, first of all, is the uh, increase on digital curriculum. Uh, this is going to be very. Uh, we did a a pilot on this past levy. It went well, so now we, we're enhancing that area. Um, also, we are um, aging equipment on the classroom. Mm -hmm. We have uh, all projectors. Uh, we have all boards, uh, co all computers. You know, uh, projection equipment. We we are ensuring that that we. Um, we have a contract in place right now, and we're going to be investing a lot on how to replace you know, for new technology in the classroom. Uh, also, uh, CTA classrooms, uh, we, we're bringing so, uh, a lot of technology. 
um, from the uh, from the central office and support to the schools, which is you know is essential. Uh, we actually up updating our uh, resource um, uh, planning system, our ERP. It hasn't been updated in about 20 years, mm -hmm. so that's a, another big investments that we're making uh, to ensure that you know uh, operations you know run smoothly and, and direct support to the schools. Okay, thank you so much for that. Um, time frame for either Kurt or Richard, uh, and this is a particular question of sensitivity. What is the time frame? for the proposals. This particular questioner says, I really appreciate the safety levy on extra security. Before getting to into the school, what's that time frame? When can they see some results? So I can speak to the security personnel, the specialists in the schools, and that's active right now with the current levy. And so the information we're providing is to continue support at that level in the schools. And I think Richard was sharing about the, the protocols and the ways people yeah. access schools. Mm -hmm. and, and I would note that, you know, we are always assessing the safety and security measures um, that we need to implement our schools. We are always looking at planning for those. We are looking at implementing some projects in the summer of 2025. We would actually be front funding those projects to get secured, safety and security measures implemented uh, beginning in the summer of 2025, um, and then continuing that work for approximately two years at our schools. We're gonna start with um, uh, our secondary schools and then move to our elementary schools, but we do have a couple of schools that we also want to address um, for our deaf and hard of hearing program. We wanna start with um, Roosevelt and Tops in the summer of 2025. Thank you. Uh, Richard, gonna keep you talking again. Uh, I hear and I've heard that there's a focus on energy efficiency, says this questioner. What kind of updates are we actually talking about? So we'd be talking about um, lighting updates. Uh, many of our schools have older um, lighting technology, uh, T12s and T8 fluorescent lighting. Um, new LED lighting or light emitting diode lighting um, has a much longer lifespan and it also has a substantial um, energy reduction um, uh, uh, usage. So you're able to re reduce your usage with the um, improvements of those light, uh, with that technology. Uh, in addition, we're looking at our single pane windows that we have in our buildings. We'll have to work with the Landmarks uh, Preservation Board with the City of Seattle, but we look at taking those single pane windows, making them thermal pane windows. We've started on some of these measures. We've been working with the Landmarks Preservation Board in the summer of 2024 at Nathan Eckstein Middle School. We began um, installing thermal pane windows there, hoping to complete that effort in the summer of 2025. BF Day is planned to go in the summer of 2025 and the 2026. Again, a landmarked building, the oldest school um, in um, Seattle Public Schools. It was built in 1892, and we're going to be replacing the windows at that school as part of our BEX 5 project. But those are the types of projects that we're talking about. about. And then we're always looking at our thermal envelopes and how we can enhance the building insulation, as a passive measure, doesn't require any operational maintenance to increase the insulation so that we reduce our energy consumption. All right, thank you. Uh, this question was asked before. However, if we get it again in the Q&A, we want to make sure that we answer it again. If schools slated for closure are included in the current levy, will funds be reallocated? Yes, those funds will be reallocated. Um, funds remain fenced per the project they've been identified to implement. We would uh, look at what are the next priorities for Seattle Public Schools. We would then engage the school board uh, in a conversation about those next priorities, get their approval to implement a project that was different than what was planned and communicated to the voters in the BEC-6 capital levy. 
Thank you so much. Kurt, this next question is about the levy cap. And uh, the questioner is frustrated by the limits of it. Is there something that SPS can do in terms of lifting that levy cap? Also, um, and I will just say this for the audience, that this particular questioner is saying, hey, they plan to put the pressure on the legislature to help us do that. So would you explain the levy lid and what we can do within that? I appreciate the question. This year, the, at ex, next week's board meeting, in fact, um, there'll be a resolution or a document that the, they're rolling back what can actually be collected from taxpayers beyond what was approved by taxpayers and the, to the tune of about $30 million in the current levy situation. Mm -hmm. So going forward in this new levy request, the school district is going to propose an increase for the capacity. Yeah. The information that's going in front of the school board for consideration next week would increase that capacity to about $60 million. So mm -hmm. if taxpayers voted to approve this levy, it would raise about $250 million. The current cap is in the $190 million ballpark. So $60 million is the answer to that question. Okay. Um, and it's going before the school board, and those documents are available on the school board website currently. Absolutely. Uh, Richard, my favorite person <laughs> on the panel. Don't get jealous. All right, my favorite person on the panel. What are the results of the Bex 5 levy? both what has been done and what hasn't been done. And are there uh, any projects that weren't finished? So it's a, a three-parter. So I'm gonna start with the major projects and then we're gonna conclude with the smaller projects. Um, the major projects, uh, we have all of the major projects that were proposed uh, as part of the BEX-5 levy have either been implemented are currently being constructed or are in design with one exception, and that would be Sacagawea Elementary School. Um, we had monies allocated for design for Sacagawea Elementary School, not uh, construction. We were looking for construction to occur in the Beck 6 capital levy. And again, we have one of the measures being proposed in the Beck 6 capital levy is an elementary school in the Northeast uh, region, but we're waiting for the well-resourced school conversation to conclude. And then um, uh, would be moving forward with an elementary school or Sacagawea. But on the BEX-5 projects, uh, we have um, implemented um, all, you know, West Woodland Elementary School, a classroom addition at West Woodland in 2021 um, was completed. And then in 2022, we implemented additions at James Madison Middle School, an eight classroom addition, a four classroom addition at Leshi Elementary School. In 2023, we had a significant amount of work. We actually uh, completed the replacement of Kimball Elementary School Northgate Elementary School, Viewlands Elementary School, and then a 12 classroom addition at West Seattle Elementary School. In addition to the elementary schools, we implemented uh, seismic and uh, building envelope improvements at Lincoln High School that were completed and um, improvements at North Queen Anne School for the Cascade Parent Partnership. Uh, in 2025, we'll be opening um, new schools in the summer of 2025 at John Rogers. We'll be completing the addition and renovation of uh, Montlake Elementary School. We'll be uh, opening a new school for Asa Mercer International Middle School. And then um, Rainier Beach High School, the phase three portion of that building, which is the classroom portion, will open in the spring of 2025 for students so that we can begin phase four and phase five. And then lastly, I'd note we had an interim site also included in the BEX-5 capital levy, which well is um, the Van Assel School. We had a 30 classroom addition planned. That too opened in 2023. And then a project that will continue until 2026 uh, is the Alki Elementary School um, construction project. And those were the major projects. 
in BEX-5. We had 10 dozens and dozens of uh, smaller projects. That work is ongoing. Um, I mentioned earlier the uh, window replacement at Nathan Eckstein Middle School. We have a BF Day window replacement. We have still yet to implement the window replacement at West Seattle High School. So we have lots of pro smaller projects yet to do in the BEX-5 um, capital levy. Um, so I so hope that answers your question, but we are tracking of those, so. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna give you a second to breathe, but I'm coming back to you <laughs> in just a minute. I want to remind that we have a few more minutes for questions. Please use the Q&A function to submit your question this evening. And now we're going to turn to Memorial Stadium, Richard. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. What is the status? And wasn't that on the last levy? So Memorial Stadium was on the BTA-5 capital levy. Um, and construction is anticipated to begin July 1st. Um, we anticipate submitting our design documents to uh, Seattle's Department of, of Construction and Inspections to review um, beginning in January of 2025. This is really a partnership effort, um, this project. We are working closely with the City of Seattle and the One Roof Foundation and Seattle Public Schools kind of as three partners in the construction of this project. The One Roof Foundation is leading this effort, um, but we are having you know, the ability to provide feedback on design. We'll have the ability to oversee the construction measures as is the city of Seattle. They too have a portion of the um, Memorial Stadium. The North Bleachers is where they house a lot of their operations for Seattle Center. So they too are working with us um, to make this a successful project for our community. Yes, indeed. All right, the next question, a very important question for our community. When will we vote on these levies? Uh, it was mentioned earlier and we'll continue to mention it. If our school board approves on November 19th, this particular measure will go on the ballot on February 11th, 2025. Very important question and grounding for our community to stay ready for that. Carlos, I believe this is going to be our final question of the evening. It says, I am surprised the levy has so much of technology in it. What happens if we don't pass this? Do we not have enough funding for technology? Why doesn't the state fund technology? So a three-parter on technology. Well, we're very fortunate that, that we have the levy uh, here in, in Seattle yes, uh, for are. the technology piece. Uh, as how I mentioned earlier, the state only uh, the funds have very little of it. Mm -hmm. um, we'll put us in a, in a, in a tough uh, position if the levy doesn't pass. And yes. I'm, I'm talking about, when I, when I mentioned earlier that the, uh, this is how we keep the lights on for technology, that's very true. Mm -hmm. um, and not only that, if you start breaking it down, uh, we got student systems, we got financial systems, we got HR systems, pretty much our entire backbone uh, uh, of our intellectual property is based uh, uh, in these systems that we have. So how I said, it would be very bad. <laughs> um, we'll have to start prioritizing uh, systems and, and, and resources. Um, you know, that, 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 that doesn't come easy. Yes. Um, there's another opportunity in April, uh, if, does, if it doesn't pass us in February, uh, to bring it in front of the voters again. Uh, but how I said, uh, we hopeful that, that they will pass this time around and uh, uh, we'll have those resources to, to, to provide and improve our, our classrooms for the kiddos. Yes, uh, it would be a very different picture for Seattle Public Schools if we don't pass our levy. I don't think I would want to go back to force and chalk. No, <laughs> no, we want to stay current with all that we offer. Uh, just a note of thanks 
to our entire community night, tonight, who, those who were in, in attendance and those who will be watching this as it is recorded. Thank you to our interpreters who have done such an incredible job being available to us. Please note that the next action for us will be before our board on November 19th. They will vote to place these renewals on the ballot in February, February 11th, 2025. After that board action, you can certainly look for us. Again, we'll be back out there along with some other supporters from SPS to doing outreach into our community to make sure that everyone knows and understands about the importance of the levy renewals. If you have questions as they arise after this particular uh, streaming, please do use our Let's Talk function to submit that question. Thank you so much for watching. On behalf of Dr. Buttleman, my colleagues here, Richard Best, and also Carlos DeValle, please have a great evening. Thank you again for your support of our students. Good evening.